Alright guys, uh, this is Matt back from Baby Dork and uh, I just wanted to uh, give you all an update about that Star Dragon deck uh, that I would put a video out about previously uh, because I actually used it in a tournament, well a version of it um, and I just kind of wanted to talk about how that went down like was it any good and if uh, if so what what would I think about changing or what were some of the issues or what were some of the things I encountered what were the cost benefits you know so the first thing I want to talk about is the most obvious um, if you watch this video and you follow I, I for some reason I didn't even think to check the errata but uh, volcanic canyon uh, which is draw one additional card after your draw discard a card from your hand so uh, this does not actually work with Ten Sword Saint Starblade Dragon, okay? Now, is it bad though? Like, would I take it out? No, actually, I'd leave it in there um, because getting an extra card is really handy, um, especially if we're going to be playing up against blue decks coming soon, which uh, discard a lot of cards from your deck. So anything you can get in your hand uh, will be beneficial but it does not set off uh, the ability of ten saint so uh, ten sword saint star blade dragon uh, i should start calling him like tsssd or something that's easier to say somehow than uh, ten sword saint star blade dragon which i just nailed uh, but this effect when you draw a card with one of your effects select one of your opponent's spirits with a three thousand or fewer bp and destroy it um, that turned out to be super handy by the way um but yes, that does not get set off by Volcanic Canyon. Um, but it never really mattered when I played with it because uh, because you may notice over here we have the the three charge draw, three star bless draw. My God, I I had hands full of these. I felt like I was constantly getting these. Um, uh, the very first round I played, I actually used them. Um, as magic cards to set this off which was great because I just was able to keep the enemy side of the field completely just drained uh, the guy could not get anything off between between ten saint being able to have that ability being able to attack and burning force uh, being able to uh, burn away anybody else dude I was just really uh, I, I had made him so mad <laughs> he, he was he was kind of mad um, but I, I and I don't blame him. It, you know, you want to play the game, but then somebody keeps shutting your side of the field down. Um, I would say, if like looking back at this, I'm probably would cut down uh, these zero and one cards, the Elemental Rubius and Rain Needle, uh, to threes, um, because man, I just I had so many of them in my hand. Um, sometimes, like or or I would put them out in the field just to have some like extra shields out there uh, but I think it was my second game I had a real problem with not being able to get any of my actual bigger cards out because I was getting all draw cards and uh, elementals and rain needles and so which sounds like it would be cool but then you're kind of stuck with these 1000 creatures and and they're taking up all of your cores you know um, out of all of the games that I played uh, with the deck, I never actually one time uh, drew the Divine Halberd Dragon Arc. Um, it did get used against me, but it with the with the limitation being two thousand or fewer BP uh, on here. So originally it was put in the deck so that uh, I could kind of cover uh, my bases if somebody was trying to zerg rush me with a yellow deck or or, or any deck with just really cheap uh, cards. Um, it says neither players can be reduced, uh, life can be reduced by an attack from a spirit that has 2,000 or fewer BP. Um, I, I would keep that where it's at. And you'll notice that this is a two now, and that's literally only because I only had two of these. I didn't realize I didn't have four of them, uh, when I went to build the deck after, <laughs> after I built it digitally on here. Uh, I did use, uh, Andromateos a couple times, um... Moonbow Dragon, uh, Dragoon, excuse me, he came in handy just to have something on the field at certain points because once you got once you got a couple of your ones and zeros out, uh, he only costs one to get on the field. 
Um, I also never really drew a photon dragon. I think I had one in my hand, but I didn't really get a, find a situation where it was necessary. Um, I played this in a, a local uh, tournament, in a three-round tournament. Um, the first I played against another red deck, which was a similar Star Dragon deck, but not uh, not a. It was Star Dragon focused, but not um, built the same as this deck. Um, and that's the one that I, I kept shutting down uh, early on. Like he would play these Rain Needles. Uh, he would play. He even played this Divine Halberd arc and these Elementals, and I just kept shutting them down with with. Uh, with Tin Sword because I got him early and like it, it was about as good as a hand could be uh, because I got a couple rain needles I think uh, and a couple elementals and a Tin Saint like really early and so then I was able to get them out on the field and then I got him out on the field probably within three turns I think is about but and he was out there by himself at that point because I think I had to sacrifice what was left on the field but I mean at that point the game was already uh was uh, w was a little bit slow uh we had been setting up our our cheaper cards you know our little shields uh but then once I started evaporating them with ten sword it didn't matter too much um I ended up uh winning that game outright uh between ten sword and I think I even pulled out a supernova at one point um super handy uh, I will say throughout the tournament, I only used Burning Force, I think one time, maybe twice, tops. Um, not that it wasn't handy, I just didn't really have a lot of opportunities to to use it, to be honest. Um, I used, of course, the Absolute Eye Shield uh, tons of times. I don't even know how many times I used it. Um, but I never quite took advantage of this confront. I did have a situation where I was going to be able to use it, and uh, I was going to be able to give all my people uh, confront, but then uh, I was playing against a white deck that had an effect uh, of uh, against my confront where he would be able to kick them back to my hand. And so, so then I then it became a problem because it became a it was a card that I had in my hand that I could be playing that uh, Dragon Seagworm, um, but I ended up pulling that game out actually um, because I was able to draw out. I, I just threw it down and then I evolved it into this supernova uh, supernova dragon in the same hand. So uh, I didn't have to deal with the the guy uh, kicking my confronts back. And then um, and then I did play a green deck too and honestly uh, I kept getting really bad hands so I wasn't able to really deal with the issue of having the creatures out uh, but he did get a card out that raised that that raised their BP of his smaller creatures up to about 4,000 and and so it made it really hard to even be able to just target them with Ten Sword. Um, even by the point I got it out because man I just that was the deck or the 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 round where I just kept getting elementals rain needles and draws like it just and and it doesn't sound like it would be a problem but when when you again when you have nothing but smaller cards like you can use them as shields but if you're not getting anything that can kind of punch back um and you're not able to take advantage of their of their reduction without using them as shields then then by the time you end up getting uh the supernova or something like that it's hard to pull out I actually did win it, but only on a technical because uh, we ran out of time. But it was kind of beautiful in a way because I could see the clock was running down. Um, I wish I was going to lose because I didn't have more life. But I did have the supernova out here, and he was sitting on the table. And I was able to pull off a last-minute evolution on my turn to bump my life back up to five. Um, it was a it was a super sexy moment. <laughs> but uh, I was weirdly proud of myself for a timeout victory, but it it, it was what it was. Um, I know earlier I think I said I would beat that white deck, but I didn't. I got stalled out and and ended up losing because uh, I I I took out three of his mammoths and he just had so many cards in his hands to play against, and so he just he just he basically had a turn where he had so many cores he was able to play i think about like 10 small creatures 
that's and that's a lot of cards and cores but his ramp up to that point and so I just I couldn't defend I didn't have any kind of suppression or anything that would allow me to continuously block for a turn or shut down all those attacks so he just he just basically uh, he had enough creatures on the field that I could block what I could block some stuff but I couldn't actually effectively block all of them so um, what would I do differently uh, well honestly I like the deck I think it's not maybe as punchy as it could be um, what I would probably do is uh, I would probably replace um, maybe one of these Andromateos or these Moonbow Dragoons or even the Photon Dragon. I would replace one of these three cards uh, and maybe actually just pull off one from both of them and... Um, and throw in the newer card that's coming along with the lore set that allows you to basically um, uh, stop non-white decks from getting health back from Absolute Ice Shield. Uh, but I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later on after that releases. But otherwise, I like the deck. I thought it was a I thought it was a good deck. So um, give me just a second. Because I want to pull up uh, another deck, or actually not another deck, but I wanted to pull up. Um, I want to pull up that other uh, the the ban list cards. Actually, uh, yeah, I'll just do it through here. Uh, let's call this preview. So, uh, what cards were on the ban list? We had, uh, first, we had OV Raptodon. Let's see if we can get it. So, OV Raptodon. Nothing special, and I'll be honest, like, at first, the, my very first reaction was, what the hell? Why is this on the ban list? Uh, you notice it has no effect. I mean, the, it's third level it's not too bad especially considering it's a free card basically after the first play uh because you have your uh one reduction and one cost right um so i could see uh, having these out early but at first i was kind of confused and then i saw a write-up about it that was talking about how because it's a pterosaur people were able to use it to get an early gigano rex out and because they're pterosaurs you could leave them on the field and then you would likely have only pterosaurs on your field, which means that your Giganto Rex, which has an ability that allows it, if there are only pterosaurs on the field, no matter how many cores you have on it, uh, Giganto Rex gets treated as if it's a level three. So you get its abilities and you have all these little shields. Um, so supposedly it allowed people to ramp up to a Giganto Rex uh, too quickly. And I mean, I get it, but I'm, I was a little surprised because I feel like uh, that's just one of the routes that people take when they're playing a red deck um, because I, I've i seen at least two, if not three, uh, deck styles per color, uh, different ways people want to play, whether they're just primarily mono decks or even multicolored decks or if they're... Uh, uh, like heavily themed decks like the star dragon deck we were just talking about um but even with that you, you know this is just a good example of thinking about the synergies that you have in place now i honestly i really don't see this as actually fully slowing down the gigano rex because what it does is it just removes kind of an extra little shield because if i'm summoning it out of gigano rex um and i have those elementals out instead of these ov raptodons or i have some rain needles out instead of these ov raptodons i'm just gonna sacrifice them and then i only probably will likely have pterosaurs on the field so um again i don't it, it's not as bad as it could be as far as a as a as a band goes just a kind of a weird one but we'll see how it goes they i guess they'll base it off of how it gets played in tournament um our next card is we're gonna go with oh of course it's 
never. I'll just look it up like this. Do, do, do. Is our Nexus bad boy that a lot of people have been complaining about for some time. It is Netherworld Depths. It's a purple card. Um, rather expensive, if you ask me. It's a, a 6 with 3 reduction. Um, but its effect is pretty great, right? You get to draw a card when one of your opponent's spirits is exhausted, right? So if you're playing with, if you were to mix this in with a green deck that does exhaustion, we're talking about a mighty ramp up of cards in your hand, right? Um, now it does have a nice little effect when you play a spirit, uh, when one of your spirits is blocked, you may pay one core from this nexus to destroy your opponent's blocking spirit with the battle ends with this three. I, I mean, it's a really awesome card, but I'm going to be honest is again, I think it's awesome but it, it's cost reflects it, right? Like, you're probably not... I mean, you're not getting this out in, within the first couple turns, regardless of what color you're playing, likely. Um, and then for you to play this, you, you then have to both have this in your hand and not have a need to play a spirit of the same or similar cost because... You're, we're, we're talking for the same cost as this, we can get out like a Tin Sword Saint Star, right? Uh, which is... Oh, no. For one core difference. He's got a seven... Uh, he's seven and three, so... That's one core difference to get him out. But we could play that Imperial Thunder Dragon Seagworm. So, uh, so again, not... For me, the cost-benefit of it... I hadn't played a purple deck since um since and so uh since i started doing these videos and and i just hadn't even honestly thought about it and then i'd heard a bunch of people complaining about it out of nowhere and um and then it ended up on the ban list i i have a hope that it comes back though um because my concern is i feel like blue I feel like they created this ban list maybe too soon because I feel like Bloon, uh, Blue is going to be like really heavily abused to just wipe people's decks. And without having stuff to get cards into your hand uh, to kind of protect them from Blue, then, boy, it, it, you're going to really be at Blue's mercy. All right. And then our final card that's actually on the ban list is Axe Spider. Now, if you've played uh, Battle Spirits uh, and you've played against a white deck, you have almost definitely played against Axe Spider. Um, so why did it get banned, right? Well, the short is because it's almost unkillable. Um, and the long answer is because it's almost unkillable by purple, uh, which is one of the, which is kind of a favored deck right now, I guess. Um, if you're not playing with white or a really great green, I don't, I don't know. I don't be honest with you. Um, but the main thing is, so it does come with armor, purple and yellow, uh, but it's level two effect is, uh, neither this spirit nor any white nexus with a soul core on it can be destroyed by your opponent's destruction effects or as the result of battle. And they cannot have their cores removed by your opponent's effects. So what this essentially does is for for battle against purple decks, um, they're unkillable, right? So purple, unless it's got a non, uh, unless it's got a non purple destruction card somewhere in there, uh, you're not you're not getting around it because of the 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 purple deck right here. And the same thing with yellow. So what ends up happening is you have this card that sits right in the middle of the field, and notice he's not even terribly that that amazingly strong so it is blockable but it does become kind of problematic when you have one or more of these sitting on the field and then you're trying to attack and then they're just playing uh infinity shields or they're playing um <clears throat> suppression and so it makes it so that you can't like that's um if you, somebody had four of each of those in their deck and managed to pull all of them with just having an axe biter at level uh level two right here uh, they could effectively block 
for for up to eight turns off of one card could block an entire field of uh, of four thousand or less BP. You know, never mind the fact that you're going to have probably other cards. So if you had this bumped up in BP because of of, uh, uh, of some uh, nexus effect, then then it could be really annoying to get around. And white already has a lot of stalling uh, effect in there. Um, and Axe Spider's pretty cheap, right? So at 4-2, it's not too too tough to get him out there. I, I feel like every time I either play with a white deck or I'm playing against a white deck, he always manages to make it out on the field. Um, he's, not, he's not undefeatable at his level 1, so I do think that a lot of that comes down to you just kind of biding your time until they need that extra core and then they'll pull one off and drop him down to level one maybe hoping that you didn't notice and then you just kind of ignore it but um <clears throat> but i gotta say this one i was a little surprised they put it out because it is such a strong card uh for for white and kind of a centerpiece for a lot of white decks but i also am not totally mad about it because I quite frankly I've lost quite a few rounds actually just trying to play around this thing so you know not too mad but yep those last three cards or including Axe Spider um, they're not going to be allowed for tournament play uh, but Bandai did say that they may uh, may let them back in depending on uh, how gameplay goes and so we won't get an official update to uh, the ban list until uh, right before set four comes out, and by that point, I would honestly, uh, I, I would honestly maybe expect the ban list to empty out and all of the cards be back in play, um, because based on some of the the drops that they've shown for blue, uh, blue has an incredible amount of um of uh what's called crush so as you see right here you get crush plus one discard a number of cards from the top of your opponent's deck equal to the total of this spirit's level plus any specified modifier so with a crush plus one at level one every time the spirit attacks you have to discard two cards from the top of your deck now that doesn't sound like a lot um, or maybe it does, but this is not the only card that has it. If you look, we've got another Crush uh, plus one. Crush, Crush, Crush plus one. Um, crush. So so while not, I don't know how this deck is going to be put together, I would personally build a Crush deck, <laughs> and I will build a Crush deck just to see uh, if I could get rid of somebody's deck because they do have the rule that at the beginning of your turn, if you do not have any cards in your deck, then you lose. So, um, and notice right here, right? This is a this is a two cost card with crush on it, right? Even like it it only costs four cores to get it up to level three, right? Um, which sounds fine, but like four cores is is. This is very early on, and if you maybe you had kind of a, an annoying hand, dude, you could be using this to delete. Like that's three cards per uh, attack, right? Um, and then we and then this also has for each spirit card discarded by the spirit's crush effect, it gains one thousand BP during this turn. I can really see people taking this. Like you bump this up to level three, right? You're deleting three cards. He that means that he's eight thousand BP effectively uh, for this turn so that's like that for a two cost card yeah that's crazy it's I mean you would be only up against a 5,000 next turn but you know you're only going to get so many turns before you got either no more life or no more cards so my kind of thinking is um, I imagine people having uh, kind of playing this crush effect to, to really uh, knock people's decks down and really frustrate them. I, I don't want to talk too much about blue, but 
I, I did also notice there's a lot of immortal cards. Well, I say a lot, but there's definitely some more immortal cards coming from purple. So we may see some immortal cards being used to kind of come back against this. So you're going to see purple's meta maybe change um, in favor of playing against this blue. Uh, but uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it all shakes out. I'm, I'm kind of excited to find out, to be honest with you. Um, but next we have the lore set. Um, that actually comes out this at the end of this week. Um, I've heard some places say that their stores aren't getting them till October 6th. Um, so once I get my hands on them, um, or honestly, they're digital so I can go ahead and talk about them, but I wanted to go ahead and do an unboxing for them just so people can see what's in the boxes. Um, but also, I want to talk about them. Uh, there's some, some cool cards coming through there if you haven't been spoiled on it. Um, so anyway... Um, this has been Matt from Baby Dork. I really appreciate you listening. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day and y'all take care.